Right, this is video number two for our more linear models where we're looking at linear regression models, correlation coefficients, and residuals. All right, so we ended here where we just copied our data from our 100 meter dash problem and we put it here in this table. And this was my independent observed values, which was years since 1924, my um, dependent um, observed values, which was my winning times. And now I want to talk about my predicted values. My predicted values would mean take the linear regression model, which our linear regression model for this problem was y equals negative 0.0096x plus 10.5730. Remember, x is years since 1924, years since 1924, and y is the winning time. So if we're going to do predicted values, that means we have to use this equation. So I'm actually going to write the equation right here. I want to use y equals negative 0.0096x plus 10.5730. Now if I do that, if I take and take each x value, each of these numbers, and I put it into this equation, and I do this substitution all these times, this could take me a really long time to do. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in my graphing calculator. So already we've already entered this data in our graphing calculator. This is currently in L1. Our dependent values are currently already in L2. So what we're going to do, if everybody can go to their graphing calculator. All right, so in my graphing calculator, what I'm going to do, this is really a cool thing that we can do, is we're going to actually go over to L3. So I've got to go up. And you have to be in the top here. If you are here in the first spot, this will not work. You have to be in the top. And what we're going to type is we're going to type the equation y equals, well, the y equals, this is kind of like y equals L3 equals, we're going to type in negative 0.0096 right now. Stop and make sure you're listening. You don't want to put an X here. You can't put an X here. If you do, you will get an error on your calculator because this column is not called X right now. Right now, this column, which represents my X values, is called L1. So I need to type in L1. L1, you'll notice, is right above the number 1, and it's in blue. So I hit second and one, and that says negative 0 0.0096 rather than X, I write L1, and then plus 10.5730. And I hit enter, and look what it did. It filled in all of the values for me. So what I'm going to do right now is you're going to pause and you're going to fill those values in. You're literally just copying from your calculator. This um, whole lesson is really about do you know how to use the calculator um, and just copy the answers down and fill in that table um, on your paper. All right, so I have filled in all these values here on my paper. This is my L3. These are my predicted values, but I want us to notice we wrote our line of best fit here, but instead of X, we have got to use L1. The biggest mistake that people will make is they'll put X and they'll keep saying, Ms. Lizzie, I keep getting an error. I don't know what I did wrong. I can't help you with how to use your calculator during a quiz or a test. You have to know, oh, I've got to put L1 here because my X values are listed in L1. All right, the next thing we're going to look at um, are our residual values. And residual values, residual means an error. So we're going to write that, let's write that, um, I guess we can write it right here on the side. So a residual 
is an error, meaning how far off is my predicted value from my actual value? What's the error? And there is a formula for calculating a residual. A residual is always equal to the observed minus the predicted. It's never the other way around. You can't do predicted minus observed. It has to be what actually happened minus what did we think was going to happen. Residual is always observed minus predicted. So, as you can probably guess, this is going to go in our L4 column. And since we want to do observed, where is observed? Observed is in L2. And predicted is in L3. So we're going to do L2 minus L3. So we're going to take observed minus predicted. That means you don't have to subtract these in your calculator, the calculator can do all of this work for you. Let's go to the graphing calculator and see it here. All right, again, I want to remind you that we have got to be at the top of the L4 column all the way up there. If you are here, you will get an error. So we want to type in the observed, which is L2, so that's going to be second and the number two, minus the predicted minus the predicted, which is in the L3 column. I hit enter, and those are all of my residual values. So um, now you're going to copy those residual values, which are the error. How far off was my prediction? Was it close or was it far away? So now you're going to go ahead and record those in your table. All right, let's practice what we've learned with another example. All right, now we're looking at the winning time for the 400 meter dash going from 1900 to 1948. These were not Olympic, these were just, um, just competitions that, um, that maybe the worlds that um, I think people go to worlds to compete. So it says determine the linear regression model to fit the data where X is the number of years since 1900 and Y is the winning times for the 400 meter dash. So again, this is going to be the independent, this is going to be the dependent, and since it's years since 1900, that'd be 0, 4, 6, 8. Well, this is a little easier to do. All right, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to enter this into your calculator. Remember, again, these are your x values. These are your Y values. Do not enter the actual years, enter um, the, these for the X values. So this is going to be an L1, this is going to be in your L2. All right, so I've entered the data in the calculator, and now I'm going to calculate my linear regression model. And I'm going to round to two decimal places. And I'll write down my equation in minutes. Right, so I've written down my equation. I want to remember that x is years since 1900, and y is winning time. I have found that if you um, label your equations, you make less mistakes. Using your linear regression model, predict the winning time. So prediction, anytime you see that word predict, we're using our line of best fit in 2020. Um, and then is this Interpolation or extrapolation, is this a good prediction? All right, so let's see. We've got three questions to answer here. What is the winning time in 2020 predicted? So that would be 120 years later. So I'm going to let x equal 120, and I'm going to go ahead and put that into my equation. y equals negative 0.10 times 120 plus 50.59. I'm going to go ahead and put that into my calculator. I'm going to let you guys do that in your calculator. And you would get 38.59. So that would be the winning time in 2020. That would be 38.59 seconds. Um, is this interpolation or extrapolation? So let me first circle that answer. This is extrapolation. 
is this a good prediction? Honestly, I don't think it is. I, I, I look at all of these winning times. I mean, it's got to come down by almost 10 whole seconds. In running, that's a lot. I'm going to say not a good prediction. Because it's too far from the actual data. Meaning 120 years out, and I don't think people will ever be able to run that fast. Not a good prediction because it's too far um, from the data, from actual data. People can't run that fast. At least I don't think they can. I know I can. So I've answered all three questions. Um, there's a part of one of your test questions that's like this where they ask you to predict, tell whether it's inter or extrapolation, and then is it a good prediction? And you've got to give something to support your claim. All right, so then um, let's see if that happens. I think that's our last example. So, oh, no, we've still got more questions though. Let's go to the next question. All right, so my next question asks me to find the residual for the year 1920. When I'm asked to just find one residual, you can find all the residuals and just write the answer for the one in 1920, or you could just calculate the predicted value for 1920 and just calculate this one residual. Let's remind ourselves that residual is observed minus predicted. So the observed value in 1920, I go to my table and the observed value is 49.6, which means I need to find my predicted value. So I'm going to use my equation, uh, y equals negative 0.10. 1920 is 20 years later. So I put a 20 in plus and when I put this into my calculator, I can do that now, I get 48.59. From this right here is the 48.59. So now my residual is the 49.6 minus the 48.59, and I get 1.01. So the residual for 1920 is 1.01, which means the predicted was about a second slower than the observed. What is the correlation coefficient for the linear regression model? I go back to my calculator. All right, my correlation coefficient is my R value, and it's negative 0.77. That 5 would bump the 6 to a 7, so negative 0.77. So R equals negative 0.77, which tells me that this linear regression model is not a very good predictor because of how low it is. It's not 0.9 or above. Last part is to fill in this table like we did in the last problem. Years since 1900, those are going to be my X values. That's what's in my L1. Winning times, that's my um, observed or actual values. That's going to go in my L2. My predicted winning times, what I'm going to want to do. Let's first fill in these two columns. Why don't you go ahead, copy your data, and fill in those first two columns. All right, so I put my data in my first two columns on my paper. It's in my calculator. Now in L3, those are my predicted winning times. That's where I'm going to type in my equation, the negative 0.10, L1, not X, but L1, plus the 50.59. Hit Enter, and those are the values that I'm going to be copying in my table for predicted winning times. Now, for the last column, I want to put in my residuals, and my residuals up in the top here are always my observed, which is an L2, minus my predicted, which is an L3, and I hit enter, and those are the times that I'm going to put in my table for that last 